If you write business applications in Java, it's a good chance that you've uh, used either NetBeans platform or Eclipse RCP as a base for your application. Now, one thing you probably won't miss after you change to JavaFX and TornadoFX is Swing or SWT. But you might miss some of the features those platforms gave you by default. And uh, right now we're working on a workspace feature uh, in TornadoFX to bridge some of that gap. So let's revisit this application that we looked at the other day. Basically, it has a refresh button and when you click it, it will uh, go out and fetch some JSON and convert it into a list of people and show you an editor on the right side. So whenever you click a person, the editor will show you the information for that person. So let's have a look at the, the app class first. The app class loads the main view and the main view will tie together the list fragment and the details fragment. So the list fragment is on the left and the details fragment is on the right. Let's first introduce the workspace. And we do that by saying that we want to start the workspace. We don't want to start any specific class we made, just the workspace. If we run the application now, we're not going to see anything that we made, but we get this empty uh, area, editor area. And we get some buttons and the buttons are all disabled by default these two arrow keys are uh, uh, navigation buttons that will allow you to navigate a stack of views this is the refresh button and this is the save button now we're going to connect some of the functionality uh, from our application to these buttons so let's have a look first we would like the workspace to show the customer details fragment by default to do that in this demo, we will override the on before show callback and we will access the workspace. Actually, we can say with this workspace, we would like to dock the customer list fragment. When we start our application now, the editor area will contain our customer list fragment. Functionality is the same, but of course now we can't see the editor anymore. Now let's hook up this refresh button and get rid of this one. Let's enter the customer list fragment, remove this button, and you see we call our own function called refresh down here, but instead we will override the on refresh button that comes with the framework. Uh, by default, uh, a view is always refreshable, but there is a, a value called refreshable that you can override uh, and return a Boolean expression if you want to disable uh, refresh in some situation. So you can bind it to something that will return the refreshable state of the view. So if we rerun now, we're lacking our button, but this refresh button will now do the work for us. If you remember, we used to have uh, some uh, information about ongoing REST calls and it was displayed uh, at the bottom. Now I would like to display it up here inside this uh, toolbar at the top. So to do that in this customer list fragment, we will override the on dock back callback. In the on dock callback, we will do some, uh, some changes, make some changes to the workspace. Let's find those changes. They were in the main view, I think. So here we have the status, task status that we injected. Let's move this over, inject it here. And uh, this is basically the uh, HBox that contains our progress bar and the, and the label. Let's move that into here. So now we're just saying inside this workspace, create an HBox and some other components. And the framework has a pretty go good idea about where to put this by default. So if we rerun now, You can see our information is up here. Stuff that you add using OnDock inside a fragment will only be available as long as that fragment is docked. So anything you add will be tracked and it will be removed if you navigate to another fragment or view. So uh, maybe also you want to have something that's always available, always there. We can go back to our app class and uh, before we dock, we can also here say, for example, add a text field 
and set the prompt to search. Here we could also add more search functionality, but uh, this is good for the demo. So let's rerun and see what we have now. We have the search, search uh, input field, and we got this uh, contributed by the fragment, uh, the, the customer uh, list fragment. So this search will, will now be on every page of this workspace. Uh, uh, workspace wherever we navigate it will always be there uh, but uh, uh, this progress bar will only be there when we're uh, docking this exact fragment the customer list fragment let's change the functionality so that whenever we double click one of these items it will take us to the customer details fragment so in the customer list fragment now we will say that um, on user select, we would like to access the workspace and dock the customer details fragment. I would also like to turn this into a table view. And uh, instead of binding the items down here, I'm just gonna pass it in here. Then I don't need to specify the type either. Of course, then we need to add some columns. So let's add one for the first name that will show the customer first name property and one for last name. I'm also going to set the resize policy to let's say column resize policy is going to be the table view unconstrained resize policy. So remember now that on user select we will dock the customer details fragment. So we moved into the details fragment. Now you can see that the back button is, uh, is uh, active, so we can go back to the first view. The save button really has nothing to do in this view because uh, uh, we can't save anything here. So we can disable that in the list fragment by overriding the savable property. And we'll just return a simple Boolean property and set it to false. Now we're probably gonna add some other way to, to disable the savable button, but this is how it works under the cover. So every time you dock a fragment, the savable property will be bound to the state, uh, the enabled state of uh, the save button. So let's just verify that it's working. Yeah, no save button. If you move into the editor now, the save button is there because we didn't disable it. So let's have a look at the customer details fragment. First of all, savable can now be bound to the dirty state of the customer view model. So let's override savable again and bind it to the customer view model dirty property. Now to actually save this, we will override on save and uh, we can just call customer view model commit. That'll push the data from the text fields back into the model. And for this demo, this is good enough, but we might also do like this and then call to some controller and actually save the, the customer. So, but for now, commit is good enough. What we could do now is also bind the, the refresh button to rollback, for example. I don't know if that would make sense in a, in a real application. Uh, it's more for, you know, refreshing lists and stuff, but we'll do it now anyway. So um, on refresh, we want to call customer view model rollback. <clears throat> Let's try to rerun. Refresh. And uh, double click. You see, I can't save. I can refresh. So if I make some changes, you will see the save button is enabled. If I refresh now, I'm going to roll back to what I had. And uh, if I make a change and save it, and then make some more changes and roll back, I will go to the previously saved state. Now also, if I go back, you can see that uh, the data was actually updated. You can also reload from uh, 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 making a new network request to, to reset the data. Now, uh, I talked about this, uh, this component here only available in this view, but it's kind of hard to tell because it's uh, only there when we actually do something. And in, in this view, we can't do anything. 
uh, that will cause this uh, uh, rest progress to appear. So to double check that this is working, let's go into the list fragment and uh, remove this visible then statement. That means that uh, all the stuff we added in here will always be visible. So if we rerun, you'll see that even when we don't make a rest call, this information uh, or this progress bar is available. So let's double click and you can see that the information uh, the progress uh, information is gone. If we go back, it's redocked up there. Now, if you want to add some uh, actions to the uh, to the bar, you can do that by uh, the same functionality in on doc. So, in the customer list fragment, if uh, the list fragment would like to have a, a button, of course, we can add a button here. Click me, for example. Functionality is not so important for this demo. And we have the button. And the same with this button, it's only available in the view where you docked it. And to demonstrate, if we go to the app class in the on before show but, um, override the function, we can add it there and it will be persistent. Let's double check that. It's there. We can load data, go to the next view, and it's there as well. Now this works for small modifications to the uh, workspace. But it's also possible to override the, or implement this workspace class directly. So let's create, for example, my workspace. So if we do it this way, we can just override init and then we can move the stuff. Well, actually we would probably like to leave the doc statement, but the modifications to the desktop can be done here. And now we can just load my workspace instead. And it works the same way. So this is just the beginning of the functionality that we're going to add. So there will be a lot more. And uh, right now, if you use the, this feature, you'll get a warning saying that it's experimental and that we're probably going to change the, the API a lot before we're done with it. Uh, we'll try to, to make the changes as uh, small as possible, but we're for sure going to add some more functionality to it. But if you'd like to, uh, to uh, give some feedback, try it out and, uh, and see how it works for you, I'd be uh, grateful for it. So uh, please have a look at it. It's going to be in the release 160, which will probably be out uh, before Wednesday this coming week. Thanks for watching.